So having got to grips with the way that Lightwave's renderer works and indeed the basics of you know, ray trace rendering itself, let's start to take a look at actual material surface properties so that we can understand stuff about how they're treated and rendered. The easiest place to start with this is diffuse because it helps to demonstrate at a most basic level some of the things that are done and also some of the equivalencies that can pop up that can cause us problems if we get them the wrong way round. Or rather, it starts to introduce us to the ways that we need to work to ensure that everything you know, comes out at the end of a render looking good. So what I have here is just a sphere, okay, and it's color 200, 200, 200, which is almost white, and we see that it has a diffuse value of 100%. Now, this is something that we've been very used to seeing for quite a number of years, both in Lightwave and other 3D applications. We have a surface color and we have a surface diffuse value. Now, of course, you know, we pick whatever color that we want a surface to be, and it can be a, a brighter color like this, or perhaps, you know, it can be some darker color like this, perhaps even going darker still, you know, something like that, and so on. On top of this color, whichever we might happen to choose, we also have a diffuse value that determines how bright or dark the diffuse reflection of the object is. First of all, what is diffuse reflection and why is it reflection? Well, in reality, everything is reflection. The only reason that you see an object, or rather the only reason that an object does not look pure black, is because some light reflects off of it, arriving at your eye or your camera. In the case of diffuse reflection, that reflection looks something like this. You have a light source and you have a surface, and light comes down from the light source, nice and straight, usually. It strikes the surface, and the surface just reflects it, but rather than doing a perfect reflection, it just reflects it in this crazy, scattered way. That's why if you've got a red ball and a light bulb, you don't see a red image of the light bulb in the ball. You just see this softly lit ball because the illumination that comes from the light bulb just scatters all over the place off the surface. This is diffuse reflection. Now with diffuse reflection, not all light need be reflected. Some of it becomes absorbed and that is why we see color. In this case, the light that I have falling on this sphere, even though it's all over so you don't see any shading, is just pure white light. In reality, the reason that you see something red is because white light falls on it, the green and the blue are absorbed by the material, and only the red light is reflected off. Hence, when that light arrives at your eye or your camera, you can only see red and the object appears to be. Some light is absorbed, some light is reflected, and it's this amount of light that is reflected that gives us the colour and the brightness that we perceive of the material surface. This immediately leads us to a certain equivalence here. So I've got a bright red surface, yep, but I can turn its diffuse value down to something like, let's say, 30% and now I get a dark red surface. Here's the alternative way of doing it though. I've now got a darker red color and 100% diffuse. We have an equivalence. Having a bright color with a low diffuse is the same as having a dark color with a high diffuse. So which of these is correct? And you know, which way round do we want to do this when we're just building the most basic of materials? In reality, there's sort of no difference between the two because the colour that we see is only the reflection of light that has not been absorbed. If we take a real physical object and we measure its surface diffuse component, all we're really measuring is how much light it reflects. Thus, in a way, anything that is red, it doesn't matter if it's a bright red or a dark red, anything that is red is bright red but darker colours are just absorbing more of the light, and so you're getting a dimmer red reflection. Of course, as an artist, this is a weird way of working. Firstly, it's not the way that we think about colour. You know, we do think about bright red and dark red, bright orange and dark orange, and so on. Secondly, whilst this example is nice and easy to set up for, you know, bright primary colours here, when you've got a mixture colour, something like a brown or a purple or whatnot, then getting a pure, fully bright such shade and dimming it through diffuse is a, you know, more 
tricky and clicky way of working. As such, the easiest way to think about it, irrespective of what happens in the real world, the easiest way to think about it in the renderer is that everything effectively has a diffuse of 100% and colour is just a function of the colour that you choose to give it. Because of this, you will find that many materials, including here the principled material, have no diffuse setting. There's nothing for it. If you want something to come out as a darker shade of a given colour, you just give it a darker colour. Because diffuse and colour have this equivalence, it means that you can ditch the single diffuse value and just stick with the colour value itself. Because by going to brighter or darker colours, you are sort of including the diffuse value in there. There is, of course, another way that we can do this whole thing, rather than fiddling with the colour or the diffuse, and that's to turn to the lighting. You see, if I turn my lighting down to 30%, then, oh, what do you know, we're back to dark red again. Why? Because there's less light falling on this sphere in the first place to be reflected back as diffuse reflection. Take any object you like, whether it's a book or a biscuit, carry it out into bright sunlight and its colours will be very, you know, bright and clear. Take it into a very dark room and its colours will be very dark. This again, although it is a way that you can change the diffuse of a material, is not a way that you want to work. You don't want to be setting things up with bright colours or high diffuse values and then turning your lights up and down in order to make the objects look brighter or darker. Neither do you want to be fiddling around with the colour of your lighting because we could take this material and we could set it to pure white and we could be using an illumination colour that was pure red but at a reduced value and we once again get dark red surface colour. You know, if you've got a white object and you take it into a room that's lit by red lighting, then it appears red. It doesn't matter what the surface absorbs or reflects because there's only red light available to be reflected. It's yet another equivalence, which again is a way that we really shouldn't be working to try and control these things. Much as your lights and your surfaces do interact with one another, you do want to deal with them separately. So if you're doing a bright lit environment, you just want to keep your lights bright. If you're doing a dim lit environment, you want your lighting to be dim and low. For the diffuse of your items and their surface colour, you do want to work primarily with the actual material colour value itself. And so this sort of becomes the first step to adapting yourself to this PBR workflow and also of course in tune with that setting up your materials so that when you have multiple objects in a scene together or when you take objects from different scenes to different scenes in different lighting situations they remain consistent and you're not constantly having to tweak back and forth between material properties and light properties to make them look correct in any given situation.